Hi everyone and welcome back to Chess for Charity. In this video, I want to show you an incredibly instructive puzzle that I came across online. So it's such a simple position. We have one king and one pawn against one king and one pawn. And I want to see if you can solve this. Take a second and see what the best move is for white here. The white pawn is going up the board. The black pawn is coming down the board. See if you can figure out the best move and let me know if you're going to find the reason why it's the best move. So before I show the solution to this amazing king and pawn ending that I think is so instructive, I want to quickly encourage you to subscribe. Half of the income that I earn in this channel goes directly to charity. So subscribing, liking, all of that stuff helps me out so much. So let's start talking about the puzzle. So the first thing I thought, and I think a lot of people may think this, is what is so complicated here? Can't you just move your king up and just start moving the pawn up and just run? Now, that may seem right, but then the second you evaluate that position, you realize that after a move like king c3, black has a very tricky defense. Not moving their king, instead, sacrificing their pawn. Now, how does that work exactly? What's the point of that? If I just take this, this is free, right? Yes, it is free, but remember, and if you don't know this, this is going to be really instructive for you. The A pawn and H pawn, if it's just a single pawn, if the king can get to the corner before white has the ability to control these squares, then it's a draw. So just for example, if I'm trying to run up the board to catch the squares, black is just a little too fast, right? Now they have control over these squares and I cannot do anything which means it'll just be a draw. They, they just go back and forth and I can never take that away from them. So if I do this, what do I do? I give up the pawn or it's stalemate. Either way, that's just a draw. So the whole idea is upon king c3 or king d3, they have this really tricky defense, a3. Now, that will give you the A pawn, and then they'll beat you to the corner. I like that idea. Now, what if you tell me, okay, I hear you, Frank, but I can catch this pawn. If I play something like B3 or B4, I can catch this pawn, which is true. You would be able to catch it. A2, King B2, A1 Queen, take. But now look at how far away you are from your pawn. Is this a draw or a win? This is actually a draw. King e6, I'm going to come get this pawn. So you say, I don't want you to do that. King b2, king d5. We could say king c3, king b3, it doesn't really matter. Now, how are you going to shepherd this pawn up the board when you're behind it? In a lot of these king and pawn endings, if you're behind the pawn like this, it's not working out for you. So king c6, king c4. Now, if you know king and pawn end games, you know this is a draw, and you know how to draw it which is stay right here. Stay right in front of the pawn. King b6, now what do you do? You wanna go anywhere like this, the king will approach. So usually what people do is they push the pawn and then it's just kind of a back and forth thing like this. And you're gonna push and what do you do? You keep the opposition or you stay in front of the pawn. That's the idea. b6, stay in front of the pawn. Now what do I do? I have to go here or I have to go here here, let's see any of these, right? These all lose the pawn immediately. So you pretty much have to go here, which means king b8, and this is a well-known draw. Hopefully you know this already. If you don't, that's fine. You're learning. Let's learn together. Here, they go there. That's stalemate. So all the way back, you can't play b4. That'll lead to a draw. So really, you can't play king c3. And I should say also really quickly, you put, they can't, the same idea applies to b3. You can't even get here. So it's just going to be the same process. You buy them a move. And then look, now it's the same thing over again. So I don't want to go super deep into that variation. If you want to check it out, it's in the description. Feel free to mess around with it. Try to take something away from this. Try to learn something here. So you might say, well, is this a draw then? If I can't go here or here, and of course I can't go there because that square is covered, what do I do? And Upon looking at this position, believe it or not, I actually got this right because I had to sit there and ask myself, why is this a puzzle? 
King B1 came to mind. And I thought to myself, okay, what is King B1 doing that these other moves are not doing? And I realized that King B1, it fights against this idea of A3. What do I mean by that? Well, if you play A3 now, I'm fine with that because I can play B3 and I'm going to be in time. Important note here, and I think it's worth stressing, if I play B4, this is a draw because look, King E5, I want to get these pawns. King A2, King D5, King D6, doesn't really matter. King takes, and just like before, look at who is in front of the pawn. They are. And I can't do anything here. This is going to be a draw. So instead, you play King B1, and if they play A3, you play B3. Now look at the slight difference here. It's just absolutely amazing the nuances that are in such simple positions in chess. There's just four pieces on the board. This is crazy. I play b3. You play king e5, right? The same, pretty much the same idea. You want to get in this area. I go here. What do you do? King d5, maybe king d4. Now look at who has the initiative. I play king a4. Am I behind the pawn anymore? No. This square's covered, this square's covered, this square's covered. You have to go to one of these two. Let's say you go to the most natural one, b6. Now who has the opposition? Bang. I have the opposition. This is a win. When you're in front of the pawn like this and you have the opposition, you're winning the game. King c7, that's fine. You can go king b5. You can go king c5. Personally, just because the way that I was like taught or the way I learned it was just take the opposition if you can. And then they just go back and forth like this. And eventually you get to the point where you shepherd your king up, you shepherd your pawn up the board. King c6, and look at what I'm doing here. I'm making a little runway because this square is not protected, but this king is so far away that these squares are protected. So they play in the corner. Maybe they're hoping to get stalemated. B4, and what are they going to do? Here, here, doesn't really matter. You just go and go and go. B5, king e7. Here's an important move. King c7. Opposition, you are now paving the way for this pawn to become a queen. Okay, king a8, does this move work? Nope. What did you just do? You stalemated the king. Did you want to do that? Of course not. So how do you win this? King b6. King b8, how do you win this now? Just very carefully. King a6, you don't want to go in the corner? Let him go in the corner. Eventually, like this, they're not going to be able to go in the corner. And they go there, simple move, and you eventually promote. If you ever play this kind of thing in bullet, just a quick side comment, one of the best ways to win in bullet is to do this pawn thing where you run the pawns up the board and checkmate the opponent. Just as a side note, one of the things that you like to do, let me just quickly show it, just, just to show it. I'm making bad moves just to show it. So... The best thing I'm trying to say here is after a move, like let's say king a4, try to run away, instead of running your king up the board, just a, this is a bullet tip that I found out, is just play queen b2, block the king, and then now make the move and mate. So really, you can mate in really cool positions where you just go push, 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 queen, and then you back up to a square that makes them get the opposition to you, and then you give them the Case of death, checkmate there. So just a side bullet tip for you. But that's pretty much it. If you think about this position from the beginning, you have to go king b1 because you have to realize the power of their defense. So they have a3. That's the only move that they have that even makes any sense. And then from here, you have to play b3 or else you're not close enough. And it's just not enough for them to hold on. They can try to run to the corner, but... It's not the same because, ooh, this is a good position. If you, play, if you play this move, they have the opposition. So you have to play king a4. All right, look at the details here. It's all about the opposition and king upon endings. If they play this move, bang, opposition. If they play this move, bang, opposition. All right? I think it's important to learn these lessons. And trust me, because I'm on, I've played chess games for a long time now, 
I've lost and drawn so many king and pawn endings when I'm up a pawn and I'm running down the board and I just move too slow or I don't see the pattern. So hopefully you can see the pattern and you can win it all. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess I'll just finish this out. So what do you do here? That's a draw because I'm running the king down the board. That's a draw. Okay, we'll draw it. We'll draw it at the end. But the point is to not draw it in, of course, in the real game and to show the value of this king move. I just really hope you learn something. This move, this move, fail, this move, king b1 wins. Hopefully you learn something from that. I found this to be really instructive. End games are so delicate, so you have to be really careful when you're playing. Even when I'm making moves at the end, I can mess it up, right? It's incredibly delicate. So just be careful and hopefully you learn something. But that's it for now. Thank you so much. Bye.